Well, hey, you guys, getting back to my Flickers of Fear series. I'm actually starting to do them recorded again. I might still do live streams every now and then. If you haven't been seeing these Flickers of Fear, I've still been doing periodic book reviews and movie reviews, but I've been live streaming a lot of them. So today I just kind of felt like recording. So whatever, <laughs> I'll just live stream them sometimes if I feel like it or record it if I feel like it. They'll all be in the same place pretty much anyway. So yeah, so I decided it was about time to do another book review because it had been a couple of weeks since I had done one. And, uh, you know, so this is another spin of my Kindle Unlimited roulette wheel. As I've described before, I usually just pick something at random. Uh, this time I got a good one. Uh, I hit the jackpot this time. And honestly, literally the only two reasons that I picked this book, which is called Children of the Dark by Jonathan Jans, uh, were because one, the cover is really retro and cool as shit. And two, I don't think that I had ever read anything by this author before, and I kind of wanted to dip my toes into an author that I hadn't read before. Uh, and this one had like a lot of good reviews and stuff like that. So I was just kind of like, all right, so we're diving in. So yeah, so I'm pleased to say everything uh, worked out quite splendidly because this book is pretty fucking great. Uh, I had a really good time with it. I mean, I just blazed through it in a few hours and it was one of those things where you couldn't really put it down. I mean, it's not really the same because it was an ebook, you know what I mean? But it's like, you couldn't really pull your eyes away from the screen. Okay. Put it like that because it's like really immersive and you got like really into the story. Now, after I read it, I discovered the first edition of this book was published in 2016. The version I read, which is uh, the one that's on Kindle Unlimited now, this is the second edition. And I believe it was released sometime like late last year, like in 2023. And I guess they did this in advance of the sequel of this book, which I'm actually not sure if it's been published yet. I don't think it has, but keep that in mind because this book does end on, I don't know if I'd call it necessarily a cliffhanger, but kind of like there's going to be like more to the story. You know what I mean? So if that's going to make you mad, then maybe don't get into it. But like I said, I don't want to oversell that, but there is like going to be more to the story. You know what I mean? So I heard that there was a sequel coming out this year sometime. I don't think it's out yet, but this does kind of end on that kind of note. Now the story is set in the present day, but it does have a very eighties, Stephen King, Steven Spielberg kind of vibe to it. In the introduction, the author, Jonathan Jans, he actually acknowledges the tonal simil similarities like of his book to Stranger Things. But the thing about it is that Stranger Things, I believe the first season of it came out like only a couple of months after this book was first published. Cause like I said, the first edition was in 2016. So I don't think it's, it's nothing like a case of like one thing ripping off the other thing. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, and he kind of said this in the introduction, but he's just like, it, all it is is that me and the Duffer brothers, you know, who are the guys that did Stranger Things, are just pulling from the same set of influences. We loved 80s Stephen King novels. We loved 80s Steven Spielberg movies. And it's just like, so it has like a similar vibe in that regard. Um, so I'm going to say if you really loved stuff like It or Stand By Me, or any of the kind of coming of age style horror by like Robert McCammon, maybe like Boy's Life or Ray Bradbury, like something wicked this way comes, something like that, um, you should probably really dig this. I think this will be right up your alley. So the whole story is told from the first person perspective of Will Burgess. And he's a 15 year old boy who's kind of grown up in this small town called Shadeland or Shadeland, Indiana. So he basically takes care of his adorable six-year-old sister, whose name is Peach. Like her actual name is Sophia, but she doesn't like being called that. So that's her nickname. Um, so he has to take care of her because their mom is essentially a drug addict. Like she got addicted to prescription painkillers and she can kind of barely manage her own life, uh, much less look after her children. Like she has a job, but she seems to be constantly on the edge of getting fired. And when she's at home, she never cleans or cooks or anything. She just kind of like sleeps and lays around all the time, like all fucking doped up. So there's that. Uh, there's actually no father in the picture at all. Um, Will doesn't even know who he is. 
And I think, I'm not really sure if they tell this early in the story, but Will and Peach actually have different fathers and they don't know who Peach's father is either. So as with most teenage boys, Will, um, you know, has ups and downs in his life like everyone does. So on the good side, he's like a decent baseball player. Like he's kind of real up on the school team or whatever. He has two really, really good friends whose name are, names are Chris and Barley. That's like the kid's nickname because his last name is Marley. It's a whole story. Like why he has a nickname like that. They have like a tree house in the woods and all your kind of standard Americana type stuff. And he also has a crush on this really pretty girl at school. His name is Mia. And she seems to actually maybe um, like him back. So he's kind of excited about that. On the other hand, on the, on the bad side of things, um, he is like a little bit small for his age and he's kind of, you know, poor. He comes from a small town, so everybody knows what his situation is with his mom being a drug addict and everything. So he gets bullied a lot uh, for those reasons. And in particular, his two main tormentors are these two kind of like slightly older, like douchebags named Kurt and Brad, because of course they are. <laughs> Sorry, anybody named Kurt and Brad, but they're, those are kind of like your standard fiction dickhead names. You know what I mean? Now, Brad, it so happens, is dating Mia, the girl that Will likes. But she seems to not be all that jazz about him anymore and like wants to get away from him because he does really seem like a controlling dick. You know what I mean? And she's like, I just have to get away from his. I mean, they're 15. You know how that goes. Now, like I said, there's also kind of the small matter of Will's mom being you know, kind of useless and like down for the count most of the time. And even though Will adores his little sister, Peach, and really does not mind taking care of her, um, he's kind of getting pretty resentful about having to be essentially the only adult in the house when he's still a kid himself, you know? So one night, Will and his two friends, uh, Chris and Barley, sneak out of their houses and they kind of sort of low-key invite themselves to this camp out that Mia and her two friends, whose names are Rebecca and Kylie Ann, are having in one of their backyards. You know what I mean? They're having kind of like a little girl's night out or whatever. So the boys show up and the girls are actually kind of happy to see them. I think there's some kind of implication that maybe one of them said, Psst, hey, we're having a camp out. Why don't you kids come over? You know what I mean? Um, and almost immediately, Mia, I can't remember if it was Mia or Rebecca, but one of them suggests that they go to this nearby swimming hole that they usually, and it's kind of nighttime, you know what I mean? So Will is like super jazzed about this, obviously. And Mia is making it pretty obvious that she likes him as much as he likes her. So he's getting all kind of excited. So they start kind of like playing around and splashing in the water and she's like in her bra in the water and he's just like losing his mind and all this other kind of, you know what I mean? It's 15 year olds. And so they're all kind of hugging in the water and they're going in for that first kiss, you know what I mean? But then Mia sees something or other out in the woods. Uh, the woods are actually called Savage Hollow. And she freaks the fuck out because she's like, she saw this thing and it was really tall and really pale and she insisted that it had these big like glowing green eyes like at first she thought it was a person you know what i mean but then she was like i'm not sure if it was a person but i don't know what it was and she only sees it for a second but you know obviously they're all kind of like wigged out by it. like yeah let's get the fuck out of here so barley then tells them that yeah there's always been legends about some kind of creatures lurking around in the woods but you know that's probably bullshit or whatever there it's kind of implied that they're sort of like wendigo type things but you know what i mean they're just like yeah it's just stories but you know may maybe not may maybe there is something to it after all now as if all of that wasn't unsettling enough there's a much more concrete problem that has to be dealt with so some years back there was a child serial killer and cannibal whose name was Carl Paget, otherwise known as the Moonlight Killer. Now, this guy kind of had like terrorized the area. I don't even remember if they said how many people he killed, but it was like a whole bunch of kids. And he was finally caught like years ago and thrown into prison. Now, not long into this story here, Carl Paget escapes from jail and nobody is quite sure where he is or like where he's heading to. 
So there are, on the news, there are reported sightings of him in Indianapolis, which is kind of some distance away, but he did kill some victims in this small town here, Shadeland, back in the day. So, you know, the locals are kind of not really taking any chances, not letting their kids go out and like, you know, tr kind of trying to keep together and everything like that. Now, despite their precautions, however, a local girl does turn up missing uh, soon enough. And it so happens that Will and some of his friends are there when she's taken. So they sort of get kind of put in hot water with the cops, like the local cops who are completely incompetent and assholish. And they basically think that the kids are just making the story up and it's like you knew what happened to her and all this other kind of shit and they pretty much like treat will in particular like a lying criminal um because like i said they know his family history he's significantly poorer than a lot of people it's that you know that kind of thing so he gets kind of the shit end of the stick right so as the whole book unfolds you get both the serial killer angle and the creatures in the woods angle and they both get kind of like expanded upon in really kind of interesting ways. And so you get to a point where Will, it's it's kind of a thing, like I said, very standard of these kind of like 80s horror movies, a coming of age kind of horror movies or novels where the kids have to kind of like battle against the thing because the adults don't believe them or the adults are idiots or whatever. So it's very much that kind of trope. So Will ends up, like Will and his friends end up having to basically like f fight for his own life, but also the lives of his friends and in particular, like his little six-year-old sister, Peach, who is, uh, you know, obviously going to be in danger. So like I said, if you're a fan of this kind of classic 80s style, even though this is set in the present day, but it is kind of an 80s style coming of age horror, the, the kind of thing that is sometimes sort of glibly referred to as the kids on bikes subgenre, you know what I mean? Um, you know, like Stranger Things or whatever, or something Spielbergian. Um, if you like stuff like that, I can't imagine that you wouldn't like this. It's very simple. It's very straightforwardly written, um, you know, because it's being told from the perspective of a 15 year old boy. And I'm going to say, like, I really don't think, yeah, there's like a lot of character setup and stuff at the beginning, but it really doesn't let up for a second. There's no slow spots or anything like that. Um, and honestly, I got super invested, like, in all the characters. Um, so much so that I kind of like got tear, I like teared up toward the end, like when bad shit started like happen to some, because bad stuff happens to a lot of people in this book, I'm going to tell you. Um, and I'm, so I'm going to say that's like a real hallmark of, you know, very effective world building and very effective characterization. The point, the, you know, the, the fact that you care so much about these characters that you don't want bad stuff to happen to them. And particularly like the main character whose perspective you see everything through. I mean, this poor fucking kid, I mean, he was obviously like a really good person, but it's just, he just kept getting shit on by life. And it was just like, and I would just get him more and more upset. I'm like, holy shit, this poor kid. It's like, he doesn't deserve like all of these horrible things like happening to him. But yet as the story went on, like worse and worse shit happened. And I'm just like, holy crap this kid poor kid can't get a break it was like awful you know what i mean it's like he has all this bad shit happening and it's like oh and then by the way here come the bullies and beat him up and all that i'm just like fucking hell man it was yeah it was it was something so i'm gonna say too this book is like um it's pretty gory it's like a monster type story and there's also like a child serial killer in it so it's it's pretty gnarly like at times and honestly it just really kind of goes for broke like jonathan jans is obviously not afraid of killing off just about everybody in um, pretty fucked up ways, gonna say. Um, so it doesn't really matter like how much you liked the characters in particular, um, probably something terrible is gonna happen to them. I mean, in spite of that though, and all of the horrific shit that happens in this book, the book is actually fun in a way that a lot of 80s horror was fun, even though horrible shit was happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like a crazy roller coaster ride of, you know, just death, disaster, and mayhem. Like I said, it's just kind of like just really gory fun, but it also has like a real heart to it because you really do care about all the characters. Now, as I mentioned, um, Children of the Dark does end on a bit of a cliffhanger, which is also kind of a downer, I'm gonna say. So just know that going in so you can manage your expectations. Like, don't get me wrong, everything in the present story, like in the novel is resolved. But um, at the end, you're kind of left with a lot of questions concerning like the aftermath, 
So, you know, maybe when the sequel comes out, I'm assuming this year sometime, um, you know, maybe all of that will be clarified or the story will be continued. So, I mean, I really did like these characters a lot and I kind of wanted to know what ended up happening to them, like after all of this fucking shit show that, that befell them, you know what I mean? So I think it's like, um, I'll probably be like one of the first in line, like to read the sequel when it comes out. Cause I really, really like this a lot. And I really wanted to see what happened to all the characters. Well, the ones that survived anyway, which spoiler alert, wasn't many of them, but you know what I mean? But yeah. So like I said, if you love eighties horror of any kind, um, you will probably be really into this. And I really, really do recommend it. If you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read it for free. You know, other than that, obviously you can support the author and buy a paperback copy or whatever you need to do. But yeah, I really did like this a lot and uh, maybe you will too. So that will do it for this Tomes of Terror. I think I actually called it Flickers of Fear at the beginning, which is my movie review, but whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. So yeah, um, <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed this review and I will see you guys again on the next one. Bye.